now back to Jules. Portland, who do you want, dude, at seven overall? Yeah, I mean, the way that the draft is breaking down, we do have a guy here. I think the Portland pick is really interesting, first of all, because they can go so many different ways. They can, you know, number one, trade the pick to try and get some veterans around Damian Lillard. Number two, they can admit that since they're trading guys off like C.J. McCollum, they can go younger. And a guy like Shaden Sharp, actually, I think would be really good in this spot, but he just went off the board. Um, or they could take a more polished player to try and go with Lillard and try and build in between. And so with this guy sliding, um, we'll go with Keegan Murray here from Iowa as the number seven pick. Um, with this guy sliding, we'll take a little bit more of a polished player here in, in this scenario. Um, from an odds perspective, he shouldn't be here. Uh, if you look at DraftKings Sportsbook, you know, he's heavily juiced to the under five and a half, minus 235. You can get plus 190 on the over five and a half, which I actually think is a pretty decent bet um, with Sacramento at four being the only landing spot where, where I think you could lose it. Um, sophomore year, Keegan Murray, 6'8", 23 and a half points, 8.7 rebounds. He shot 55% from the field, almost 40% from three. 75% from the line. He blocked two shots a game. He had over a steal a game. Um, just a well-rounded, polished player that made a huge leap in his sophomore season and should be relatively NBA ready. Um, you know, if you're looking at the guys above him in this draft, maybe like Banchero on the offensive end is the only more NBA ready guy um, right now in terms of what we have. So I think this could help a Portland team trying to build around Lillard, try and, uh, try and bounce back. Yeah, a lot of people consider him uh, plug and play as a rookie, too. Um, okay, let's go next. Colin, you're on the clock. Eight overall, selecting for New Orleans. Who stands out to you? Uh, I don't love this pick, by the way. I think we good. hit sort of a wall here. Um, I think it's a good spot, but not a great spot. But I'm going to go with, just because of where the organization is and the talent that they have right now, I'm going to go with Dyson Daniels out of the G League. Um, as we all know, Australian point guards, the NBA, always work out and never, ever have any problems when they're picked in the lottery. It's 100% success rate, zero problems. I can't imagine. I mean, Dante Exum, obviously, a 10-time all-star at this point. Ben Simmons, the happiest player in the NBA. But um, the thing about Dyson that really impresses me, 5.1 assists per game in just 32 minutes a game in the G League. Rebounds well, 7.4 rebounds per game. He's not a pure scorer. But he's a guy who can make other people better. Um, I think that's going to be sort of his niche and his role in the NBA. I don't like the fact that they already have Jose Alvarado, who I think is going to play himself into being like a rotation player in the league. But having Daniels and Alvarado in the same backcourt, one's going to start, one comes off the bench, and you sort of have one with the second unit, one first unit. Early in that, I think that's going to be Daniels as, as part of that second unit. Um, if they find a way to keep Zion Williamson, he's a great match because he throws great lobs, he's a good passer, and he can find him. If they don't find a way to keep Williamson, I think he's a guy that people will want to play with because he's sort of got that Lonzo Ball style of, I'm going to make everybody around me better and I'm a pass-first guy. So uh, for this new, uh, whatever you want to call it, regime, era, whatever they're doing in New Orleans right now, and boy, I hope that franchise finds a way to hang on. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be the fit. So I'm going with Dyson Daniels, high ceiling, good passer, makes everybody else better. All right, cool. After eight comes nine, that's where we find the Spurs. Waylon, you're back on the clock. Talk to Magoose. This is a tough spot for San Antonio. I think the Spurs would be thrilled if, if someone like Ben Matherin, you know, were to fall to them at nine. Even Dyson Daniels, you know, he could kind of develop alongside DeJounte Murray. Uh, I think Keegan Murray feels like just a classic Spurs pick if he's available. But uh, with the way the draft breaks, I, I think they go for a kind of ultra-modern type of player who I think even five or six years ago, like, we're talking about him as a borderline first-round pick, maybe even somebody who wouldn't have entered the draft. But with the way that the league is going, Jeremy Soham out of Baylor is exactly the type of defensive wing, switchable, uh, huge, big body type of guy uh, who you want in today's NBA. You know, every single successful team, it feels like, has at least one of those guys who's just this defensive stopper. And, you're, you know, if you're that good on the defensive end, you're willing to overlook things like a really shaky three-point shot or terrible free throw shooting, uh, which are some things that Sohan has battled. But, you know, watching him, he, he has, like, the same body as, like, a Ben Simmons. Obviously, he doesn't do anything that Simmons does – when he's playing basketball, at least, uh, on the offensive end. But defensively, he's that kind of player. I mean, he's a legit 6'10", you know, 230, 240, big body type of player uh, who's going to last a long time in the NBA. So, you know, San Antonio has a lot of needs right now. I think it'd be really great to get more of a scorer with this pick. But, you know, you're looking now at a potential lineup next year of, you know, Jakob Pertl, Keldon Johnson, Jeremy Sohan, Devin Vassell, and DeJounte Murray. I mean, that is a daunting 
starting five uh, in terms of two-way ability. 